Google Analytics Client ID is essential for tracking your website visitors. It allows GA4 to group events by users and understand that several page views or events were completed by the same person. But there are more nuances to it, and I will explain them in this video. Here I have a demo website, and on this website I have installed Google Tag Manager, and inside of it I have installed Google Analytics. When Google Analytics is activated on a page, it stores a client ID in a cookie. Client ID is a randomly generated identifier that Google Analytics uses in order to distinguish that the person who navigates between pages is the same visitor. When you go to the website where GA4 is installed and you open more tools, developer tools, then go to application, cookies, and then select your domain. If you enter underscore GA, you will find this cookie right here. So this is the client ID. The first several numbers are more technical, but these two numbers right here are client ID. This is the timestamp of when the cookie was created, and this is a randomly generated number. In my case, the client ID ends with 7976, and if I go to the next page, the cookie still ends with 7976. Since the value was the same on both pages, Google Analytics knows that I am the same visitor on this page and on the previous page. If, however, I delete this cookie and then start browsing again, for example, I refresh the page, GA will generate a new cookie and this time its value will be something different. So now Google Analytics thinks that I am a different user. So client ID is an essential part of how Google Analytics tracking works because then it is capable of combining several page views of the same session and Google Analytics is capable of assigning that data to the same user. If client ID did not exist or if it changed on every page, then Google Analytics would think that every page view is generated by a different user. There are several places where you can find the client ID or where can you fetch it in order to use in some other use cases. The first one is the user explorer. You can find it by going to explore, then select the user explorer. And here you will find a list of client IDs. Even though this is displayed as app instance ID in the context of website, this is the client ID. I can zoom out a bit to make it more visible like that. So if I click here, I will see all the events that were done by the user who had this particular client ID. You can also find the client ID in the BigQuery export, because if you have connected Google Analytics with BigQuery, all your data, all events are streamed to BigQuery. However, the name of the parameter here is not client ID. It is called pseudo user ID. So if I move to the right, eventually I will find that parameter right here. So user pseudo ID is the client ID. Another place where you can find the user ID is the one that I recently showed you, and that is in a cookie. So GA cookie contains the client ID. I have a lot of other cookies right here because this is my demo website, so I mess around here a lot. Then there is a command in gtag, which is used by Google Analytics, and that command is get. Here you can select what kind of information do you want to get, and one of those fields that you can fetch is the client ID. Simo Java has created a template for that in Google Tag Manager. So let me show you how that works. If you go in your web GTM container to templates, then search gallery in the tag templates section, and then you look for gtag get API. You click it, you add to workspace, add it, and then you can create a tag. So go to tags, new, tag configuration, and then select the gtag get API tag. Here you have to enter the measurement ID that you're using. In my case, I am using this one. So I will go to admin, data streams, select web data stream, and then copy the measurement ID. Then I will enter it right here and I can select what kind of information do I want to get in the data layer. In this example, I will be using the client ID, so I will keep it as it is. And then I will not add any trigger. And instead I will just name this tag something like that. I will click save, save without a trigger. And then I will fire this tag with tag sequencing after the GA4 configuration tag. So I will click on the tag, then edit the tag, 
advanced settings. Right now, as you can see, I am in the configuration tag. And then I go to tag sequencing, fire a tag after this configuration tag fires. And then I will select the GTAG get API. Click save. And now I will refresh the preview mode. And here after the configuration tag has fired, here we see the data layer push, which is called the GTAG API get. And one of the parameters here is the client ID. So if you want to use this, you would then need to create a data layer variable, which is called GTAG API result dot client ID. And then you could use that data layer variable for some other use case that you have. For example, maybe you want to send the value of client ID to some other platform unrelated to Google Analytics. And if you are not using Google Tag Manager, which means that you probably have installed Google Analytics 4 with GTAG, then this would be the command that should be activated after the config command of GTAG is live. Here you would need to replace the measurement ID here, and then everything else would look like this. So this kind of code would log to the console the client ID. So if your developers want to use this, they would need to modify this part right here in order to get the client ID and then use it for something else in the code. So now you might be wondering why would you need to get the client ID in the first place? As I've said, one of the examples could be that maybe you want to send client ID or maybe your developers want to send it to some other platform which is not related to Google Analytics. That is fine, but if they want to send it, first they need to fetch it. And that's where things such as get command in GTAG is useful. Another use case where GTAG is useful is if your developers want to send data directly from their server to Google Analytics server with a thing called measurement protocol. Here, all requests that are sent to measurement protocol require a client ID. So instead of X, there should be some numbers belonging to a particular visitor. So if your developers want to send something from the server, first they would need to fetch the client ID of the visitor. And again, for that, they should use the get command and get the client ID. Even though client ID is a very important part of Google Analytics, it's still not perfect because of some technical limitations of how browsers work. For example, client ID cannot be used for cross device tracking because if a visitor browses your site, let's say with desktop, and then the same person browses your site with mobile device, Google Analytics will think that these are two different persons because cookies cannot be shared across devices. That's just how browsers work. So if client ID is the only thing that you're using, then cross device tracking is impossible. Also, cookies can be deleted. The visitor can delete the cookies. Cookies can expire and cookies can be blocked or they can be limited by things such as ITP created by Apple. So if the visitor, for example, clears the browser, clears the cache, clears the cookies, and then visits your site once again, Google Analytics, just like any other regular analytics platform, will start looking at that visitor as a new visitor. So that's just something for you to have in mind. And one final thing to mention is that maybe you have heard of a term called user ID, because Google Analytics 4 also supports user ID. What you need to remember in this context is that client ID is not user ID. Client ID is an identifier that was randomly generated by Google Analytics and it, it is stored in a cookie. When a visitor browses your site with a different device, client ID will be different. If cross-domain tracking is not implemented, then the visitor who goes from website A to website B will be treated as a different user on website B. User ID is the ID of the user that you have in your database, which means that the user must log in to your platform. If your website does not have any login feature, then you cannot use user ID and your tracking will be depending only on the client ID. If you want to learn more about how to implement user ID, then I have another tutorial about that and I will post a link to it below the video. I hope that now you have a better understanding about Google Analytics client ID, its benefits and drawbacks. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.